Hello, and welcome back to the Conscious Contact Podcast. My name is Janae Peavy, and I'm in need of caffeine, and I'm here with my co-host, <laughs> Susan Sanders. And today, we're going to talk about, like, it could get heavy pretty quickly, or we could keep it light, which we're not very good at. Um, motivation, determination, commitment, and the way they interplay and the differences between all of them. Whew. I feel like we should be, like, legitimate... Um, philosophers to be able to talk about this yeah and maybe that is uh the the piece we need to start with that we're not experts this <laughs> yeah is us wrestling <laughs> with all three in case are you didn't different? know how same are they <laughs> yeah yeah um how do you consider these to be different oof okay or do you want to start with their similarities oh I don't know. I'm indecisive. I think Do I sound like a high school English teacher? Compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. I write an essay that is two pages long and double spaced. Um, I think that people get caught up in their lack of motivation um, because motivation wanes so quickly. At least this is I'll talk about my my own personal experience. So motivation is great when it happens upon me. Um, so like once every couple months, once I realize things are piling up around me or I haven't done X, Y, or Z that I told myself I would do or whatever. And then I'll get in that mood where it's like, clean out all the files and go run and eat clean and you know, whatever. And that'll last for maybe a week. Uh -huh. And then for me, my determination and commitment to my goal has to kick in because motivation is gone. Yes. It's flying out the window. Goodbye. Uh, that is such a flighty emotion for me mm -hmm. that I, that is not reliable to be able to, to lean on when I really don't want to get up early, but it's part of what my goals are. I really don't want that smoothie. I want mac and cheese instead, but it's part of my goal, you know, which there's balance in all of that. Yeah. However, I know that my motivation has nothing to do with uh, like my commitment to my goals how much I know they're going to affect my life, uh, why I truly want to do something. Mm -hmm. And motivation is just that like manic whoosh of, of uh, a push forward, mm -hmm. but it has to be built upon determination and commitment based on me knowing my goals, how deep they are, why they matter to me, which is the bigger part of it, not just the goal itself. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause motivation is just bullshit. <laughs> yes. I agree a zillion percent and this is one of the things that drives me crazy when I work with individuals whether it is on um, their goal planning in a variety of ways whether it's fitness or organization mm -hmm. or time management or just life coaching in general the idea that willpower oh I'm just a terrible person because I don't have the willpower Ugh. Oof. Will power does not exist. Yeah, I, I don't think that that is an accurate metric to be judging yourself by ever, first off. And again, willpower is this, this thing, which you may or may not have the definition written down. But for me, willpower is like this mythical Unicorn. Grecian thing mm -hmm. that uh, the guy that wrote... Um, the, the military guy that wrote about getting up at like 5 a.m. every morning and he lost a whole bunch of weight and is super committed. Like that is what I think is of a like a drill. Person? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I think I know who you're talking I about. I can't remember his name, but he talks about, you know, like his willpower being so like it just reminds me of the stereotypical um, drill sergeant in the military. Like that is willpower. And if you just tried hard enough, you could yeah. have done it, which yeah. in 99% of cases is not true right. in, in my experience. Like willpower is another one of those words like motivation that doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's, it's supposed to make you think about determination and commitment and grit and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it gives you this idea, um, like it wraps perfectionism up in that. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't allow for real life to come in. Yeah. So I think willpower and motivation are excellent sound bites for social media, mm -hmm. but it's just not reality. No. There's so much life that happens, and that could be 
the other interesting things that you choose to do that come along. Mm -hmm. It could be the other people that are priorities in your life. And it could just be life coming at you. Yeah. Like maybe you you get hit by a car on the way and that doesn't mean that you're not motivated. And, you know, it makes me think of... um, uh, there's a concept in running streakers. And so this is not people who run naked, but people oh, who oh. <laughs> they have a streak of a mile or more um, running every day. Mm. And there are people that will um, run through injuries, run through illness. Yeah. And I think there's value in commitment. Mm-hmm. But when does the commitment start to interfere with real life. So for example, there's one streaker I know who did not stop running when he had knee pain and he ended up having to get a knee replacement and cannot run. And even walking is super painful for him now. Yeah. Well, that is, I think, I feel like that's opposite of committed. Right. You're committed to the streak. You're not committed to the core value. Because one, yes. one of my core values is, I'll make this about me. <laughs> this is um, it's our podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I meant that sort of in a way, like, let me not talk about someone else's knees. Let me talk about my own knees. Um, one of my core values is sustainability. Mm-hmm. And how that applies to my health is... I want to be 90 and hiking with my dogs and my spouse. Yeah. So, and (laughs) um, I wasn't ever great at running and I, it hurts. Yeah. I hate running. So, (laughs) I I mean, there's a lot about running that I value, but I don't have running as a value. Yes. I have sustainability as a value. I want to be healthy Mm -hmm. in the long term. So running may be mentally and physically improving my health today for a very short time of that run because of the beginning and the end and a lot of the middle it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So that is a choice that I had to make. And I say like the, the surface level of that is that, you know, my surgeon and my physical therapist and I decided that this isn't sustainable for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly could override them oh, and I'm, say, yeah. it's my life. I'm going to do it's that. It's my life. <laughs> right? Do yeah. we have the rights to that music? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, we will not be putting that under this. this <laughs> um, but when I go back to my core values, I am more committed to my core value of sustainability than I am motivated to run. Yeah, yeah. That's That's the thing. Like when I hear of people working out when they're sick or, you know, not letting themselves eat the Halloween candy because they're so committed to this diet. Like it's the opposite of what their actual goal is. Like if they want to continue whatever their form of diet is, what to get them, you know, losing weight as a healthy goal, not just a number on the scale. Mm -hmm. If their goal is to run every day, like what is underneath that? Right. If you're not going to be able to sustain this to keep this going in the long run if it's going to make you binge on halloween candy because you've told yourself no for so long if it's going to make you be burnt out and injured to where you cannot work out full stop Mm -hmm. what is the point like the i think we we are unclear on our goals i mean i am at the beginning and i need to do much more work before i even start the thing Mm -hmm. than i ever really need to do while i'm doing the thing yeah. Cuz once I'm super clear on what that core foundational goal is, that motivation and willpower it doesn't need to apply to me anymore because if I can harken back to what is my true goal, if it is a big enough goal and if it matters enough to me, mm-hmm. that's when the determination and commitment come in and those are so solid that yeah. I can have the piece of Halloween candy and then go back to eating my smoothie and my healthy dinner. Right. And don't feel the need to then say, oh, well, fuck it. I'm going to get the chips. I did so terrible. Why couldn't I resist the piece of chocolate? Whatever. The yeah. commitment is saying, I didn't do, this didn't exactly line up with my goals. However, I'm just going to hop right back on track because I am right. committed. It's not, I'm going to be perfect. It's saying I'm determined to reach my goal. So whatever the hurdles are, I'm going to deal with them, but I'm going to continue on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and with this example, let's stay on the example of healthy eating and, um, uh, I don't want to say cheating. I know, I know. 
uh, the healthy eating and the idea of having having Halloween candy. Yeah. Um. So that is our example. So <clears throat> I would like to suggest that having the Halloween candy. So at a certain point. When you get into a spot or when one gets into a spiral, <laughs> we're not talking about the candy anymore. No, it's the emotions, man. Yes. yes. So when well, I know that I am sitting down to a whole entire bag of candy corn, <laughs> that um, I do love candy corn and this hat that I've knitted I was going to say. Yes. To my love of candy corn. Happy <laughs> October, everybody. If you didn't like candy corn, honestly, we might just have to stop the podcast right now because <laughs> I have very strong opinions. I love candy corn. If you don't, that's okay. I still love you. But for a podcast co-host, we need to be on the same page. Right. Yeah. The only reason that I'm okay with people not liking candy corn is because there's more for me. Oh, very yeah. smart. I need to send you the picture <laughs> of the end cap at Harris Teeter. I walked into the grocery store yesterday morning and I was like, <gasps> It was this massive display of candy mm. corn. Controversial, and I won't get down a rabbit hole on this. Controversial opinion. I may like the pumpkins better. Oh, I do like the pumpkins better. Mm. They're very They're so hard good. to find. Like, they I have are. to get a bag of pumpkins like in August. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, but candy corn lasts forever. So. It does. Yeah. Um. So when I sit down to have the whole bag of candy corn, <laughs> um, it is because I'm mentally checking out... Mm -hmm. Um, of what I actually need to address. Yeah. And so I think when someone's like, oh, well, screw it. I've already ruined it. Like, then you're mm -hmm. starting to get into all the other feelings that are not about the candy. Yes. Yeah. It's about how you feel about not maintaining a perfect level of macros or, you know, whatever it might be or yeah. related to your nutrition. Because the idea of a food guide pyramid or the plate or whatever it's that everything fits. Yeah. The judgment calls when we say I ate good or I ate bad or I'm going to be bad today. Like, mm -hmm. what is that about? Like, yeah. I'm going to be bad? Yeah. Which I think is hard for people, especially if you have not dealt with disordered eating. Like, saying that a particular food is bad is incorrect. Um, for me, what is bad for me is binge eating. The mm -hmm. entire bag of chips. The chips itself are not the problem. Just like right. we're talking about. Like, it's That's my emotions. It. Yes. yes. Like, it is not the Rice Krispie Treats. It right. is that I eat 12 of them instead of yeah. the serving size of them, which would be completely acceptable and normal and okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. buying an entire cheesecake instead of eating a slice of cheesecake right. or making an entire cheesecake is more often what happens. Um, but yeah, it's not what I'm eating, which yes, it's, it's great to eat fruits and vegetables and non-refined sugars and all that, but it is not the particular food. Like if you're eating a serving size or a tiny piece of Halloween candy, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's when we let that be what controls our emotions. Right. That we get into trouble. And again, when I do that, it's because I'm either willfully ignoring, which is more often the case. Or I'm not clear on why binge eating candy is not in alignment with what I want for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm not checking in with myself and I'm not pausing mm -hmm. to think about it. You know, the longer that I get on with it, like the more that I pause and say, okay, I want a whole box of Kraft mac and cheese right now. And mm -hmm. I'm going to eat it, cook it and eat it all for me. The more that I say, well, let me wait like 30 minutes and go do either a menial task or the opposite, go sit with this, mm -hmm. the less that I want it. Right. Or the less of it I want. It might not get rid of the craving completely because um, the right. human body is wonderful for just, you know, craving things. Mm -hmm. uh, so either is my craving a, a real craving and it's going to be met with a small amount of rational portion size? Mm -hmm. Or is this me trying to control my emotions with food? More often than not, that is the case. And then I need to be clear on why that's not okay for me right. and how that's going to make me spiral <laughs> and then like reel that back and see, okay, why mm -hmm. am I like super high on my emotions right now? Like what's going on and deal with that instead. Mm -hmm. And there could be an evolutionary biological rationale for that. Yeah. So if there's a a situation where that you experience where you feel emotionally hijacked and you just have that flood of emotion and 
in your system, the flood of emotion is actually hormones literally coursing through your body. Mm. So if in your body, and then we've talked about this before, that your body doesn't know being chased by a pterodactyl <laughs> or someone just came in to a meeting I was in and just was screaming and, you know, my safe place became unsafe. Yeah. Like, so you have the same hormones racing through your system. So when you come home from, or, or maybe it's something a little more benign, not necessarily someone attacking your, your safe place, but if you're feeling anxious at the grocery store because you can't find things and there's too many people. <laughs> How did you know? You just take, <laughs> Cause that was me yesterday. <laughs> Thus the candy corn that got Damn plunked it. in my basket. <laughs> First thing, but my body doesn't know the difference. So when I come home from the grocery store after getting feeling emotionally hijacked, basically yeah. from the grocery store, yeah, yeah, I want nothing but pure sugar yes because that is a quick energy that will evolutionarily yeah get me away from the pterodactyl yeah or help me fight the pterodactyl whatever mm. um but when i'm just like oh i shouldn't feel xyz at mm. the grocery store then i just have the candy or whatever simple sugars and that's what the the mac and cheese is it's yeah. oh my gosh i need some carbohydrates mm -hmm. to to go in quickly because those are burned quickly by the body yeah yeah it's it's funny um i mean i i think that some people get confused um because i've talked about this with a lot of different people and at the beginning of the conversation i've had a couple of people be confused and think that that means that i don't think it's healthy to set any goals for myself because I don't, I think that motivation and willpower are bullshit. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying the goals that I used to set for myself were bullshit goals, first off. Mm -hmm. so that's the first layer of that. Um, it needs to be much deeper. Like if you're going to have a goal, it needs to be tied to like the core values of you as a human or how right. you want to be remembered when you're dead. Because otherwise, it's not going to matter and you're going to let it go. Like, you're not going to be able to reach that goal because it's not going to matter that much to you. Right. Like, even if it feels like it matters to you at the beginning, mm -hmm. if it's not tied in with those core values, it, it, you're not going to have the, uh, the determination, the commitment to say, this is why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And not to be morbid, but like, yeah, like, I, when I'm gone and someone's doing a eulogy for me, this thing is going to help me live up to the values of what I hope people see in me mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. you know? And again, that's, that's not saying that I'm not leaving room for life to happen. It's saying, what, what do I do when life happens? Yes. That's a big part of goals is what do you do when everything isn't a hundred percent okay that you have a meeting in the morning when you normally work out and you have to fit it in somewhere else, or you have a birthday party you're going to, or it's the holiday season and there's sweets everywhere. Like, what do you do? In those, in the hard situations, for me is what determines if I am, you know, living a core value or not. What my, yeah. is my goal really realistic, sustainable, or does it have a point at all? Right. Is in the hard moments. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the idea of the specific goal comes in mind too, mm -hmm. because that ties into your why. Yeah. Now... I want to go back to something you said first, first off the bat about motivation. When you have those those days where you can just whirlwind around yeah. because that motivation is there. Which, a.k.a. manic energy, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that there is a place for motivation and it is to kick off oh, yeah. that I idea because I think motivation needs to be used more for like the inspiration startup mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you have the motivation and the determination to carry you through once motivation goes and sits down in the corner mm -hmm. and is like woo I'm glad we started that yeah I'll check back with you later when I have another good idea exactly it moves inertia because yes. inertia you know things stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force which is motivation like yeah. oh, that's a super good idea let's go do that I think that I would love to change the the language and and have people think of it less as motivation because it is inspiration yes it's saying, I am inspired by X, Y, or Z to do this. So yes. whether that's 
someone you're following on Instagram just started a fitness challenge or it's someone that you saw has, you know, changed their life or you read that book about getting up at 5 a.m. or whatever. Yep. You have this rush of inspiration. It's like creativity. Like it cannot be relied upon. You either lean into it and enjoy the ride and then it goes away when it goes away mm-hmm. or you completely ignore it. Like it's it's not something that you are able to cultivate within yourself. It either is or it isn't for me anyway. Yeah, because with that inspiration related to to the art world. So I am inspired by so many different creators out there, whatever the medium might be. So I am inspired to, let's say I'm inspired to pick up, um, this happened a lot when I was doing more digital scrapbooking. Mm. So I'm really inspired by this layout that I've seen by this professional scrapbooker. I am going to do that layout. Yeah. So I'm inspired (laughs) by it. I'm motivated to do it and I start to do it. And then like the inspiration sort of wears off and I'm like, well, I don't really want to do that thing or I don't want to take the time to learn that, Mm. that technique that I'm trying to do in Photoshop. Yeah. So I'm just going to do it my way, Mm -hmm. but I have the core value of creativity. That is what gets me through to finish. I'm going to finish it my way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great because it's my way it didn't turn out it never has turned out (laughs) the way the original has but I was inspired by that and I finished it my way yeah yeah I think that that's a huge lesson like getting that inspiration motivation from something or from someone else or whatever taking it upon yourself to see like how is this going to fit into my life value wise time wise sustainability wise like all of that yeah. And then making like a rational plan, not a this person works out an hour every day and only eats this many calories or, you know, doesn't yeah. ever touch sugar. Like that's not going to work for me. And I've right. fought that for a long and I think a lot of people have. Like I fight what I what I know is sustainable and what I know I can and can't do. Not to say that I don't push myself to do things out of my comfort zone, but mm-hmm. I've tried those diets where it's like no sugar. And first off, fruit is amazing. And if you're saying no right. sugar, you're getting rid of fruit and that's not okay for me. Um, and fiber and like all of that. Anyway. It's not okay according to most dietitians. also. Exactly. Like you are supposed to eat all the things unless you have a true gastrointestinal issue with something. Right. It's okay to eat everything. Like, no mm-hmm. sugar in my coffee. No Why did I do food. that to myself? Is that a song too? I, 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 think, I think so, so. actually. <laughs> and it's like, it's not like I'm putting a tablespoon of sugar in there. It is a teaspoon at most mm-hmm. in my coffee once a day. Like, right. and I will demonize that instead of saying, oh, well, if I would just, you know, consistently move my body for 30 minutes a day, that might help a lot more than removing the sugar from my coffee. You know, like... Mm-hmm. I'm not really thinking it through. I'm getting this inspiration from Instagram or this new fad thing or whatever, Mm -hmm. and I'm rushing into it, and I'm not actually thinking out, how does this apply to my life? Why do I care? Like, what is this core, what is this touching that's a core value for me? Is it to not eat sugar and be on my high horse about that? Which, no shade to you, if you don't eat sugar, that's fine. But that's not a core value for me. Right. Like, I have lots of other core values with sustainable food and regenerative meat and like all of that but that the sugar thing like I realized this has nothing to do with me (laughs) like why am I doing this yeah and it's it's really saying okay it's not no sugar that's not a value for me it's saying I need to be thinking about what I'm putting into my body Mm -hmm. and pausing before I make a choice Mm -hmm. you know and that's it and I can still make the quote unquote bad choice or mm-hmm. the less nutritionally dense choice. Yeah. But if I'm aware of it, that's what my value is, is the awareness to help me make sure that I'm not binge eating and I'm not restricting and I'm, you know, all mm-hmm. of those things. Mm-hmm. But it requires you to do some actual thinking, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because when we get inspired, let's say who we get inspired by, mm. um, you know, considering that source. So they're... Yeah. If, you know, to stick with that idea of, you know, Halloween candy and, and, and weight and body image and stuff we, we started with, just because someone might look a certain way and say it's because they never eat Halloween candy, for example, uh-huh. um, we don't know what their relationships are like. 
maybe they're a terrible person because their body feels awful because they're doing this. Uh, Yeah. And I think the more we make that conscious contact with ourselves and interrogate our reason why we want to make a change, because truly behavior change happens when the pain becomes too much. Yeah. Yeah. And so is it the pain that you are doing or not doing something or you're feeling left out and I will be a part of something if I do what other people are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, truly going back to the five whys, why do I want to make this change? Well, why do I feel like I want to do what this person did because they're successful? Mm -hmm. So I want to be successful, but why do I feel like I want to be successful? Or that type of successful. Yes. Like, does that show their family life and how happy they are as a human? Or is this monetary? Or is this physical? Did they just get fired because they're crabby at everybody? Right? Because Or they fell asleep at work because they're not taking in enough calories. Yeah, yeah. Or why do we determine that as being successful? Yeah. Um, you know, Because it, I think we have this fallacy of willpower. And we see people who we think have willpower and we're like, ooh, this magical thing. I want it to rub off on me. And if I just get up at 5 a.m. and take a cold shower and only eat this many calories and work out this much time, it's going to change my life and I'm going to be happy. Yes. Like if I just do these things, I'll be happy. I'll get more done. I'll be the alpha human. Right. And like where are you leaving time to like one, connect with your higher power connect with the people around you, like be a good human and volunteer your time. Like, Mm -hmm. cause at a certain point that goes from being like healthy, uh, commitments to your well being into selfish, uh, restrictions to where your schedule has no wiggle room because you're only doing stuff for you. Yeah. And if people butt into that, you're going to get crabby with them Mm -hmm. under this guise of, if I do this, I'll be the best version of myself, yet you're alienating everyone around you. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've got two real life examples and and uh, um, and to try to sort of talk through is in that, um, you know, working on a book proposal now because one of my dreams is to be a published author. And I just said it again and now I'm on videotape as well <laughs> as on podcast. <laughs> so, you know, when I look at, other published authors on social media, there's this whole thing about like an overnight sensation. Mm. And what you don't see is <sighs> these all people, these, excuse me, these people all started with 50 subscribers on their newsletter, yep. all of whom they're related to, yep. which is the situation I'm in right now. Mm-hmm. Like, well, they have 10,000 people. I have 50. So I should, th- th- I should stop. Ugh. So I'm inspired by them because I see how proud they are and excited to bring their book into the world, et cetera. And then I sit down to write their proposal and I'm like, and I get to the part about my platform Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, well, I can't do this. So that is where I'm really leaning into that idea of my core value being integrity. I have said this and I want it. Yeah. So how does wanting it, what are the actual behaviors that I can do, the small things I can do on a daily basis to act like I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And and acting as if goes a long way yeah. sometimes with this. Because again, motivation is bullshit. And sometimes you're not going to want to do the thing that you know you need to do to succeed. Yes. And if you look at it and you say, no, this is what I need to do. And yes, this does align with my core values. And yes, this is sustainable for me. I just need to do it. Y- if you're waiting for it to be easy, you're going to be waiting forever. Right. Like that's yeah, that, not how this works. <laughs> that's a great point. And and that leads right into the second example because sometimes doing what we're committed to isn't easy. Yeah. And oh, I lost my willpower. I thought this was going to be easy. Oh. So I don't want to say who who shared this with me because I I did not ask her permission first. But I was talking to someone who was talking about her um, exercise pr- program, mm-hmm. and she was like, you know, I just the way her schedule is quite literally the only time she has is to get up at five yeah. and exercise. And she was like, I feel so much better after I do it. I'm setting my day up. Yeah. I am, you know, I get X amount of water in. 
The dog gets attention first thing yeah. in the morning. Which hello values. Yeah. Right. Right. And she's an Enneagram too. So like her jam is making sure that everyone is having a good time. Yeah. And she, you know, gets her, her reflection time in. And she's like, but I'm tired. Mm -hmm. It is really hard to get up at five o'clock. Yeah. So that is where I'm, I'm also making that differentiation that I'm sure there was inspiration and motivation that this is my routine. I'm going to be doing it. Yeah. And then the reality comes of like, oh my God, it's Thursday. And I feel like I've been hit by a truck and my alarm went off. Mm -hmm. Um, What is my motivation? Yes. And sometimes what is my motivation today is once this is over, I'll know that I addressed my core values first damn thing in the morning. Yes. What a way to set my day up. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And yeah. I think sometimes we, and this is another topic for an episode, the hard equals bad fallacy. Yes. Like just cause, and, and this is such a, again, this is a huge conversation. Like check in with your core values, make sure it's sustainable, like all of those things. However, just cause something is hard doesn't mean that it's, it's something that you shouldn't do. Like right. you have to do the underpinning work to make sure you're setting yourself up for success. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, just because something is hard doesn't mean you need to say, oh, well, that's not sustainable then. And I can just say, oh, I don't have to do it because it's going to be hard. Right. There is a fine line there. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really honest with yourself if you want to to get to the core of that and know, is this just going to be hard or is this not sustainable for me? Yeah. And I think a lot of people skip out on that because, again, it's commitment and determination. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not motivation because it is that. And and that's the thing. Motivation is like sugar for your for your emotions when you're ramping up to go to a goal. Like it makes you think, oh, this is great. And if I could feel this way every day and be this okay. clear on why I want to do it and have this much energy to do it then it would be wonderful and easy. Right. I mean, yeah, it would, but that's not reality. That's not how this works. Like, right. you're going to have to want to do this when you don't want to do this. Right. And you've got to be clear on your goals. Like, to do hard things, it, you have to have a good reason. <laughs> so you have to find your good reason. Or mm -hmm. if you don't have a good reason, maybe look at that and maybe don't do it then. Like, figure out what what is the actual right. goal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what it sounds like you're saying is there's going to be friction with everything you want to do. Yes. And sometimes the grease that alleviates that friction is your commitment and determination. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the the grease that gets rid of that friction is real is the truth and yeah. realizing that oh, this isn't my best yes today. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the goal was wrong or it could be the timing is wrong. Yeah. You're the wrong person for it. Or you're just going about it in the wrong way. That's right. Or yeah. your how is the wrong way. So, yeah. you know, back to my example of my anonymous friend, which truly is not me. This is actually an, another <laughs> person. Um. You know, she's getting up at 5 a.m. to exercise and this and that and the other. Well, next week, her partner's going out of town the whole week for for work. So when you're single parenting to, you know, a middle schooler and a grade schooler, mm. like that's a game changer. And they're very, very busy. So when she's acting as a two parents, yeah, maybe next week there's going to be a goose egg on that 5 a.m. exercise. Yeah, yeah. But then what happens the week after? Yes, exactly. When you return is, to yes. the average week. Yes, like that. that is the make or break for your goals. Yep. It's, it's what do you do when, when life happens and then how do you get back on track? Right. Because you're going to fall off. Like everyone falls short of their goals at some point. Yeah. But it's staying on the road to the goal. It's like, yeah, That's right. I might be very close to the ditch over here on this day, but I can see the goalpost mm -hmm. and I am correcting my steering wheel and I'm going to slowly start making my way back over there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I had a thought when you were talking, I'm trying to will it back <laughs> to me. Um, choosing your hard is, is also something that I try to think about. Like 
so I, I, the eating and the mac and cheese example is just very easy for me. So if I'm choosing my hard, so the hard might be I need to deal with my emotions instead of eating this mac and cheese. That's one hard. Mm-hmm. Or it's I eat this mac and cheese and then I feel like shit about myself and I still don't deal with my stuff. <laughs> that is the other. It, that's still hard. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's still going to be hard. And I'm my body's going to feel the repercussions. I'm going to feel like crap about myself. And I'm still not going to have dealt with what I need to deal with. Mm-hmm. So it's it might seem like an easier option. So like me not moving my body, me not, you know, continuing to do the spiritual work, me not getting up and spending time with God, like that might seem like the easier option when my alarm goes off, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I'm choosing a different version of hard. I'm choosing right. being reactive to people all day when I don't have that <laughs> morning right. thing. You know, I'm choosing to to potentially have issues in old age with mobility if I don't start now. Like, it, mm-hmm. I may feel like this is the easier option, but it's just me choosing a different version of hard. Mm-hmm. So I, I have to, you know, really look at that and say... Am I being honest with myself? (laughs) Like, is this truly the easier option or am I going to make this harder for myself later on? Yeah. Yeah. So having the long-term goal in mind. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's good. Um, Oh, gosh. I I cannot will what I had to say back. Uh, (laughs) It happens. Oh, man. (laughs) Um, So commitment. I think is like a very broad word also. Like it could be committed to your partner or committed to a contractual obligation or committed to a goal. Um, And again, I mean, just all of this goes back to what is my uh, like framework for life? What do I, Mm -hmm. what characteristics of people do I hold in high esteem? Mm -hmm. So, it, and most of the time, like, shocker to, to no one, I'm sure, it's not going to be that this person woke up every day and worked out. That's not necessarily what you are looking at someone that you admire and seeing, unless you follow, like, fitness Instagrams or whatever. You're looking at this person who seems happy, who is mobile, and who you see as someone that has that willpower and determination. Mm-hmm. And you don't understand that the willpower is just what you see on the outside. Like there's so much hard work that goes on. And when you commit to something, you're committing the good, the bad, the ugly, the days you feel like it, the days you don't. You're Mm kind of constantly have to reevaluate that situation. I mean, think of relationships, a marriage. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't mean that it's all sunshine and rainbows. Like you were saying, I'm doing this no matter what. And that doesn't mean that some days are going to be shit and I'm going to pop off at the mouth and not be as loving as I could be. Right. All of that stuff. You're saying when I do that, I am committed to use a person. I'm committed to this person. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the work to get back to being the person that I know that they deserve and that I deserve to show up as. Right. And it, it means inherently it is probably going to be hard again like it, it's not a yeah. floaty thing that you're just going to fall into if you really want to do something it requires choices and recorrection and recommitting every day when you wake up mm-hmm. it's not a i say i'm going to do this and then i can just you know write it in my schedule and everything will be fine yes you've got to wake up and say here is what i am committed to Yes. Yeah. And you, you nailed exactly what I'm over here nodding all about right there at the end. It is not what you say. It is what you actually do. Yes. And when I first started in recovery and my counselor was talking to me about finding a sponsor, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was about, I want to choose someone who's my sponsor, who, um, has what I want. Yeah. Who shows up and how I want to be. Yep. And that was me watching other women who didn't just show up. Because, see, that's how I feel like, well, I'm Mm. just saying what I do. It's not just who shows up. It's what do they share? How do they respond to other people who are hurting? Mm -hmm. Um, How do they respond to me when I am hurting? 
and their consistency over time. Yeah. Those are the sort of things I know that I want in my life. And so that is what I'm trying to surround myself more with. Yeah. Not necessarily who someone who, um, and to get back into the relationship example, instead of recovery, like I don't want to surround myself with people who tell me they're married and then Mm. just can just, I see them treat Uh, their spouse poorly. Yeah. Or complain about their spouse all the time. They never, they, they just don't show me that they have what I want. Yeah. I'm not in their relationship and I don't know, but I know what I want for me. Yeah. And so I think that's what we're trying to get a, get to about choosing your motivation and inspiration. But even more importantly than that is choosing who you want to be, um, mo- who you want to learn commitment and motivation commitment and determination for yes, yes not just who you want to learn and be inspired learn motivation and be inspired by yeah yeah no I agree and that that was a huge thing for me too and I had much less like things that I was looking for <laughs> I truly because of just where I was um I wanted to see who says they're happy and genuinely is like mm-hmm legitimately shows up and is a happy human being and someone that is not angry all the time. Yeah. And like, I need you to tell me how you did that so I can see if what you did would will, will work for me. And <laughs> it, that is hard. Um, it, I wanted someone that would talk the talk, but then I could see them walking the walk after. Yes. Cause that's, that's hard. Cause it, again, it's what you do, not what you say. And there's a lot of people that I ran into that said a lot of really cool stuff, but then after the meeting, we're just miserable. Mm-hmm. We're bitching about this or that, or always in a bad mood or always had this going on or whatever, which yeah. is fine. There's seasons of life where that happens. I'm not talking about like legitimate things that people are asking for help for. But there's an idea of staying in the solution. Yes. And in recovery, there's a specific way that you do stay in the solution. Yes. And that is what we're talking about now, because I strongly believe that staying in the solution related to our idea of commitment, staying in the solution is going back to your core values. A hundred percent. And it's, it's, I, I listen to people and, and when they had problems, I would listen to them how if they are offering or if they are talking about how they're going to work on it right because like or what they're doing to try to move that needle because if they are just bitching it to bitch which there's a time and a place for that but if they're just complaining about the same thing over and over and over again and not saying i'm talking to my sponsor about or i'm going to therapy for it or i'm praying about this will you pray with me or whatever Mm -hmm. if they're not actively trying to get away from it I can't be around that yeah because I I know me and if I am not living in the solution and if I am not committed to change when the pain is great enough for me to want to change I'm screwed right (laughs) like I am fucked if I do that and Mm -hmm. I am not saying like I'm rude to people that are like that I'm just saying I'm not going to go grab coffee with someone that is struggling in a way that they have the ability and and capacity for change Mm -hmm. but I can tell they're willfully ignoring it and they want to stay in the pain yeah which I've been there and sometimes it happens right but I if I let that into my life it will rub off on me and that's kind of the other thing like watch who you are motivated and inspired by yes because you don't one you don't know how much work goes into it Kind of like the scrapbooking thing is what I was thinking. Like, I can be motivated by beautiful things all the time. Like these quilts. I don't even quilt. And I'll look at them and be like, ooh, I want to try that. And then I'm like, no, the fuck I don't. That's probably like 500 hours of work. You want the quilt, but you don't want to do that. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's finding that out. Like this person that I think is successful or that I, you know, aspire to be or admire. Am I willing to do what that person does? Right. And if I'm not, I got to like move on and unfollow and be done. Because if not, then I will inherently just think less of myself Mm -hmm. because I'm not willing to do what they did. And that's okay. (laughs) That means that's not for me. (laughs) Right. It's okay to want a quilt, but not want to be a quilter. Exactly. It is okay to want to look at beautiful paintings, but not be a painter. Yes. 
Yeah, it goes back to the idea, I want to sing loudly. I don't want to be a singer. Yeah, yeah. Great. And that is valid. <laughs> yeah. Know what brings you joy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Know thyself. Yeah. I mean, that's the core of all of this. Yeah, which would be a great segue, but I want to ask you first, anything else you want to talk about with determination and mode? Uh, Jesus, this is why I have to There's write things so down. There's so many words. <laughs> anything else you want to share about determination, commitment, or motivation before I swing us to our joy for the day? No, just again, motivation is bullshit. And it's wonderful when it happens and seize it, uh, write it down, journal about how you felt. Um, but then you have to set like an actual concrete plan of action um, for it. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Well, what has been bringing you joy this week? The weather. It finally, like, we had a couple of days. We're in North Carolina. We had a couple of days of, like, 80s. I was like, what the hell is this? Um, and then we had, like, it went 70s. And it was getting in the 40s at night. And then suddenly, it's like, freeze warnings everywhere. And it's chilly. And I turned on my heat for the first time this morning. And then immediately, like, turned it back off. <laughs> it's too hot in here. But it is, like, fall is truly my favorite season. I'm going to Woods of Terror on Saturday you know, Halloween is happening. It's, oh, it's glorious. And it's, I love when I love things that have nothing to do with me. Mm. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like it I really can't does. control this, you know, yeah. like this is God, man. Like I, I didn't do this. I can't stop it. I can't start it. I can't will it into existence, even though I tried. So when it finally comes, it's like, oh, just living in awe, I guess is the core mm. of that. And like knowing that it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> it, and I just want to Bill Nye, the science guy, about Ugh. this for a second. And this is really my nerdy husband that brings this up. That the color, because we'll have to post a picture of, of right outside your window. Yeah. These trees in your neighborhood are amazing. Autumn flames, man. And that is there all the time. But it's underneath the chlorophyll that makes the leaves green. Yeah. We're admiring death. <laughs> right which <laughs> death can be beautiful it can yes um but also we all have this beauty in us all the time it just isn't the right season yet yeah yeah so you know that's the woo woo tie-in to this episode for sure um yeah i wish i would have gone first so we could wrap up on this but <laughs> i gotta talk about my joy for yes you do because i um we're gonna be traveling uh for a week for i'm gonna be traveling for a week for a work and for work and uh, my husband is tagging along he's gonna be on vacation to drink all the coffee in the pacific northwest yeah and um so this is my phone that's going off i have it on do not disturb but my people can break through do not disturb <laughs> and we're having a conversation about voting early oh. Jesus. <laughs> um <laughs> So, oh, we're going to travel and, you know, we just did this books episode, but um, I wish I would have thought of this when we did the book episode, but it's brought, brought me so much joy is that I have borrowed books for the trip. Mm -hmm. So I've got some Kindle books and some audio books. Well, I seem to have borrowed eight books and I've got one paperback that I'm almost finished with. And then we're, of course, going to do the read, read, and return. Mm -hmm. So that's 10 books I'm taking for a seven-day trip where I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not even sorry about it. I know there are some that I'm not going to like. Yeah. And so I'm planning to abandon a few. Yeah, yeah. Um, the paperback that I have, I will be leaving in Portland, Oregon. So um, I love books. I love traveling because it's just a special twist of my my reading life so. i love that yeah that's wonderful well this has been a great discussion yes and i um uh i'd like to know what everybody else thinks yes. about motivation being bullshit where has it failed you because i know it has yeah <laughs> and if this has changed maybe a commitment you're thinking about i'd yeah. like to hear about that too just any thoughts and opinions you have about our discussion would be great um you can uh, comment on where we live on social media. I am at sustainable underscore Sue. Yes. And you are at? Janae Peavy. I know this is a lot of wonderful words to have to spell. It'll all be linked below. Um, podcast website is consciouscontactpodcast.com. Come join the book club. 
We're doing a Zoom for the book Anger by Thich Nhat Hanh on October 27th at 7 yep. p.m. Um, so even if you don't read it before then, come join it. it it's going to be like a live podcast episode. I'm mm -hmm. I'm feeling that vibe coming because there's oh, just yeah, so sure. much in it. So even if you don't read it, even if you just read the first page, if you don't have the book at all, just come and join us. We'll have a link for that. Um, if you sign up for the book club at the website, you'll get sent that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm excited. The season is upon us. Uh, but yeah, let us know your thoughts. Good, bad. Otherwise. Yeah. We'll see you on the next one. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Bye.